after I told you something about how to do observation and how to bring focus into your observation, I now would like to tell you something about field notes. Because obviously the question now is, well, what do I need to note? What to note and why to note? Well, what to note depends on, again, the focus. It depends also on the level of structuredness you need for this observation. It depends, thus, on the topic and especially your research question. And again, those depend on the ontological position or the epistemological position. Different positions leads to different research questions, leads to different needs in, fo in structure, leads to different foci. So let's discuss structured observation first. How to do structured observations? What is a structured observation? Well, structured observations start with a coding system. You need to have a nice clean sheet with focus, a certain focus, simple, neat system. And why do you need this system? You need this system in order to specify types of behavior to certain specific categories. It means you need rules of interpretation. And these rules are in, of interpretation need to be on your sheet, need to be on your computer, on your telephone, or wherever you, you, whatever you use. You have these rules directly in the field. So you use a coding system within the field and you structure your observation. And the categories you use within this uh, type of observation, these categories has to be, have to be mutually exclusive. If it fits in one category, it cannot fit into another category. An example, a nice example, a classic example of um, structured observation is the Flanders interaction analysis categories. These uh, categories are used in uh, educational science. And uh, here they are. And what you see here is a teacher can accept feelings or can praise or encourage a student accept or use ideas of student, students or lectures. A teacher um, can criticize or, or justifies authorities. And what you do using this system is you assign these numbers to a certain time slot or to a certain behavior when a teacher, a lecturer is talking. So in order to observe specifically teacher student interaction, you use these codes. So if a teacher gives direction, you use code six. If the teacher uses some ideas of his or her students, then you say it's a three. Uh, so you use, you use this system while in the field and directly use these numbers. And there are other types of systems of structured observation as well. In qualitative research, we more often use a little bit more unstructured observations and um, uh, unstructured note-taking. And Lecomte and Shenzhou suggest three types of notes. The first is inscription, the second is description, and the third is transcription. And I'm going to explain all three of them and add a little bit to it. Well, the first, the inscription notes. The inscription means also in the field notes, while you're doing field work. And the first type of note is the mental note, a note you take in your head. We all can come up with examples. Someone says something to you and you think, I need to understand, I need to, I need to remember this. So you put it into your head, you make this little mental note. In other research situations, you can use a classical notebook and write down scratch notes or jottings. Someone says something and you say, I've got to note this. And then your role as a researcher is way more clear. Nowadays, we use other stuff as well. We use mobile phones. And why? Not only to create scratch notes. There are quite some researchers who are typing in their notes nowadays rather than writing them down. But you can also make some photos and videos and audio recordings with it. So it's new technology for inscription notes. That's the first. The second is description notes. Description notes you make afterwards, after something occurred in the field. So in the field, you take these little jottings. Out of the field, you start writing full field notes, meaning descriptions of the observations, meaning 
minutes of meetings or, or conversation, um, meaning situated descriptions or interview summaries. So you write down reflectively afterwards what happened in the field. And you try to write it as complete as possible. Now that's the second type, description notes. The third type is transcription. And obviously these are interview transcriptions, but also transcriptions of interactions. Probably you recorded something, audio recording, and then you start transcribing that. Or, oh, there it is, the audio transcription. Or you have a video and you transcribe the video. That's pretty hard, but it's possible. And again, you use the mobile phone or some recording device, and then you transfer it to a computer by transcribing it into written language. Now that's the third type of notes. The fourth type of notes um, I added because those are the other types of notes you make during fieldwork. You write comments all the time, asides all the time, annotations all the time, but you also write memos, all kinds of memos, reflections on yourself and your fieldwork, methodological reflection, methodological memos, um, theoretical memos, but also diaries and logs. So you write a lot during fieldwork. So is there that all there is, either structured note-taking or unstructured note-taking? Obviously not. You can obviously combine them. And that's, uh, for instance, what uh, Lord Humphreys did in his uh, famous tea room trade. In this tea room trade that is well known uh, because of these ethical uh, issues, um, uh, he uses a form like this. He observes men in... Uh, public places, in, in this case it's a men's room, um, having sex. And he observes them and he uses this map in order to write down where they stand and what they do. But he also uses this, a description of the action. He describes. So there's a structured bit in it, codified more or less, and there is a more detailed version, a fuller note version of it. 